Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2011 Advanced Imaging Conference in Santa Clara, California. And right now I'm speaking with Chris Morrison, Vice President of Support Services at Mead Instruments, who's going to tell me about a very exciting new product, the Mead LX800 with Starlock. This is our high-end, ultra-stable German equatorial mount with full go-to capability, just like most other Mead telescopes. But the exciting aspect of this is the Starlock, which is this um, extra piece of equipment here off to the side of the optical tube, which is not only a wide field camera that assists in alignment and pointing, but a narrow field guiding optic that will automatically locate and identify a guide star as faint as 11th magnitude and start to guide on it automatically after the end of each go-to. So you take the controller, ask the telescope to point to an object, it will go there, and the cameras will automatically identify the object, center it in the field, and begin guiding. Yes. So if you were doing astrophotography, you wouldn't have to find a guide star, you wouldn't have to do all that work. It, you just say, go to this target, and the telescope's going to identify it, center it, and start guiding, and you just open your camera shutter. Dennis, you're absolutely right. This system takes all the muss and fuss out of astrophotography. No more does an astrophotographer have to decide what equipment he's going to use, what guider, what optic, rings, bases, and all the different things, and have a PC capable. All this is self-contained in one system. All you need to do is add a camera. All right, something that can do that much stuff, that complicated, sounds like it's gotta be complicated to set up and run. It's really not. Most of the electronic in innovation in most of our products is designed to be transparent to the user. This telescope can be aligned in just mere minutes and get reasonably good astrophotographic results without having to further refine your alignment. But there's a nice feature that allows you to do that called a drift assist. This guider can actually go to your two, your meridian star and your equator star for a drift alignment, image the star, determine the position there, offset the optical tube. All the user has to do is recenter that star in the main optic and that refines his alignment. And he can repeat that step as many times as he would like to refine his alignment to his desired uh, standards. So you use the equipment that's here, part of the telescope, to not only set up, but also to get your precise polar alignment, and then it does all the guiding, does all the, the accurate finding and all the accurate tracking and guiding, all by itself. That's correct. All right, well, let's take a look at uh, what you take this out in the field and set it up. Let's look at the pieces. Okay. You've obviously got the tripod, bring that out. The next big piece looks like it's the equatorial head. Now, when that's broken down, what is, it, what is its sort of minimum weight that you would set up with? The equatorial head without the counterweight shaft and without the uh, dovetail or the optical tube and the Starlock is about 45 pounds. All right, so everything from the tripod up, this part, without the counterweight, without the OTA on there, about 45 pounds. Yes. Not too hard to handle, and it looks like you've got handles on there to even help you assist and put it on the tripod. Absolutely. All right, all the electronics are right here mounted on the telescope. Actually, one thing we probably should point out to people is that this is not a finished product right now. This it is, is not, this, this is, is a prototype. This is a lot of prototype, that's why we're seeing a lot of just bare aluminum. In the end, that will all be aluminized, and uh, even up here, there's an electronics box that's it's obviously going to be a, a finished piece in the, in the final product. That's correct. So all the cables can remain plugged in when you actually stow them out. Absolutely. All right, and I noticed you've got, looks like internal running of the cables here. Correct. So you, you can run up, and if you have your own equipment on there that needs cables, you can run them through the mount. There's more than enough room. All right, so you don't have to have any wires hanging down that could get caught as the telescope moves around. That's correct. All right, tell me a little bit about the optics. Okay. You, this is a brand new optical tube. It's based largely on our advanced coma-free optics that we've had on the market for a number of years. But what we've done is respond to astrophotographers' requests by making it faster. This has a native focal ratio of f8. This is also going to have a baffle-mounted f5 focal reducer field flattener as an option. All right, and the size of the telescopes are going to be available with this system? In ACF, we're going to have a 10, a 12, and a 14-inch optical tube. And this, is the, this is a 10. This is a 10. We're also going to have a 130 millimeter APO with a 3-inch focuser and an available field flattener option. What's the F on that? F7. Very good. And they're going to be available, so you can have the, you can get the LX800 mount by itself. Right. And that's priced at? At $59.99, including the Starlock. All right, so the whole mount, the tripod, the head, the whole tracking system, $59.99. That's correct. And then you've got the optical tubes priced accordingly. Correct. Obviously, starts like that with the 10 inch and then the... That's correct. All right. Give me a little details. I know you had told me earlier about some of the stuff that's going on inside the telescope, the new, the new focusing system. You want to tell me a little bit more about that? One of the big problems in movable mirror telescopes is image shift. 
and it's something astrophotographers have fought with for years. And one way we decided to address it was to add an internal Crayford style focus system where the baffle and slider are actually supported by six roller bearings that completely eliminate any radial movement of the mirror during focus. So in other words, your primary mirror is not just a tube sliding on another tube, but it's actually a Crayford style bearing system for the mirror riding on the central baffle tube. That's correct. So that eliminates all your flexor, uh, the flexure or the shifting that existed in, in previous Schmidt Cassegrain type scopes. Absolutely, but it preserves the massive back focus of a moving mirror telescope, which is extremely important to a lot of researchers and astrophotographers. And additionally, we've added a dual speed focuser oh. that allows seven to one dual speed focusing right on the back. All right, well, tell me a little bit more about Starlock, what it is and how it works. Dennis, Starlock is really the heart of the LX800 system. It's a two camera system that uses a wide field channel and a narrow field channel to accomplish all of its main goals. The wide field channel is used for a line assist and high precision pointing, while the narrow field channel is your guiding optic and also provides drift assist. These cameras are actually sensitive enough to be able to do all the things you need to do. It'll guide down to 11th magnitude stars automatically without needing to select a guide star, focusing, or anything else. So you've got two separate cameras, you've got two lens systems, two detectors, all right, and they work in conjunction with one another. Correct. All right. Um, you know what? I want you to give me a little idea of how the sequence would happen if we've got the telescope, we've brought it out, we've set it up, it's roughly polar aligned, okay. and we're going to turn it on. Give me the quick sequence on how you get the telescope precisely aligned and start slewing to and taking pictures of your targets. Sure, I'd be happy all to. Right. The telescope itself has two home sensors that allow you to set deck precisely at 90 and the RA at zero hour angle. With the GPS receiver, you get date, time, and location, so the telescope knows about what the sky should look like. At that point, the only thing you really need to do is get Polaris in your viewfinder and begin your one star alignment. The one star alignment process is actually somewhat of a misnomer. We use Polaris and one other reference star to be able to polar align the telescope. From the home position, AutoStar will slew the telescope off axis to allow it to determine the error of the mount with conjunction to the pole. Then all the user needs to do is recenter Polaris in the main optical tube by using the azimuth and altitude mount control shown here. Little fine adjust. Actually, you showed me you had a tool earlier. Have you got that available? I do. Uh, the LX800 comes with this uh, handy dandy tool that will actually fit all the various knobs on the product, which really are just these two sizes. The large one and the small one. Correct, and that'll help you lock the leg locks, the mount base, the, the azimuth control, and then AutoStar will prompt the user to recenter Polaris in the main optic using the mount controls and our nifty little tool. So that's great. So this thing fits all the knobs on the telescope. So when you're done with the alignment, you can put it down, lock down all the bolts or unlock them in the morning as the case may be. And it also gives you a nice handle so that when you're trying to make a fine adjustment on the elevation, you've got that leverage to do it. Absolutely. Oh, very good. Have a clever little tool. So after Polaris is centered, the telescope will slew over to one reference star to give it a, a reference to right ascension, which you will center in the finder, then in the main optic. And while you simultaneously do that, Starlock is actually registering the center of your optical tube to make sure it knows where the optical center of that tube is. After that, the telescope's aligned, and Starlock is now searching for an alignment star. And as soon as it locks on one, in as little as just a few seconds, it'll start to guide automatically. All right, that's the question I was going to ask you. You've now got it set up, you've got it polar aligned, you decide you're going to slew off to, say, your Galaxy 106. Mm -hmm. So you put in M106, slew there, and Starlock automatically does? It automatically selects a field star as faint as 11th magnitude, locks on, and starts feeding course corrections back to the telescope instantaneously. And it doesn't have to be at the end of a go-to. When Starlock is on, anytime you let up off a slew key, even if it's a manual slew, Starlock will lock onto a star as faint as 11th magnitude and start to guide automatically with no user intervention at all. So you basically have a full-time auto-guiding system that's all automatic. Absolutely. It's working in the background. It's a full-time integrated solution. It doesn't require an external PC. It doesn't require any knowledge about astrophotography at all. Simply put a camera on the back of the system, open the shutter, and you're an astrophotographer. Boy, that changes 
everything about doing astrophotography. Well, it means we, one of the things we've tried to pride ourselves on is using technology to make the hobby more approachable and to bridge that gap that generally required an, uh, an amateur astronomer to have years of experience before he can start taking astrophotos. Now you can just do it right off the bat. Absolutely. This is a complete system. It's a sturdy tripod, an ultra-stable, high-end, German equatorial mount with full go-to and GPS, an F8 optical system with an F5 option, and an integrated full-time auto guider with high precision pointing that gets you accurate down to an arc minute. You could put any object on any chip. And just start shooting pictures. That's correct. So the telescope, in addition to guiding, it, the star lock helps you get your precise polar alignment in the beginning of the night. You're ready to go with everything right here. No okay. external computer. Couldn't be easier for the user. Just Plug it into a 12 volt power supply and you're ready to go. Absolutely. Wow. Chris, I want to thank you very much for telling me about the LX800 and Starlock. I want to wish you a lot of luck. I know you're going to have a lot of people in here in a few minutes asking you a lot of questions. Thank you, Dennis. All right. Show me a little bit more about what's going on down here.